But but I am just going to go ahead and say that because I don't know who all is in here that, that isn't in the 11:30 class. We look like we might be okay today. We look like we're doing a little better today. Okay. The quiz is on Tuesday. So the next time we meet, it will not be in here, but it will be over in CBB 126. I'll give you more information about the quiz right at the end. But just so you know right now, the um, that that's where you'll go. It's a one hour long quiz, but that's where you'll go, not here. And what you want to be doing and pacing yourself is working all of those those school practice problems that are under the homework practice problem section. So a whole bunch of little short problems. Maybe some are longer than others, but nonetheless, they do different tasks. Your quiz eventually is going to be just one big problem where we incorporate all those tasks into it. But if you don't pace yourself on this, it's hard to do all of them right at the end. If you don't try to at least do all of them, there may be some tasks you haven't practiced. Okay, I mean they might not—they didn't come up in every problem. Some things just come up in one problem, and so. But if you do practice those and you feel good about those, you are well prepared for the quiz. I mean, that's what the quiz is. But, but I will answer questions about the quiz at the end after we get through all of this. So when we were on this sheet, um, I know that we really fly in there at the end. I even told you don't type these in, just watch me, because I wanted to explain the difference between these using a number line, and so I was showing you that. Uh, the ones you will really find for most of your use in Excel most useful are the round rather than round down. They're, they're the more, I guess in some ways, um, intuitive ones in the way that they work. And then, I didn't put absolute value on there, that's, but that's what ABS is. However, I do want to show you this one that we did not get to, which is the transposing data. Um, so, let me get rid of these. These aren't here. So I, I need you to know what's in these cells right now. What's in Q, 4, 5, 6, and 7 is just a 1, okay, that's all. What's in R, 4, 5, 6, and 7 is the previous column, which is Q, plus 1, okay, you see that in all. Same thing in S, S is the previous column, plus 1. So I want you to know there are actually formulas in some of this, hard-coded values and others. So we have seen how to use P special already, because when we wanted to change the, the way the torsion strength inspectors recorded their information, because they weren't, they didn't follow our instructions and record it to two decimal places. So when we wanted to change that, just formatting it doesn't change it. Formatting changes what we see, but it doesn't change what's really in the cell. So we purposely went to another column, did a round to make these go to two decimal places, and then we used a paste special where we were pasting those values back into the, the torsion strength column. Okay, not the formula that created the values, just the values. That's a type of a special paste. Well, this is another type of a special paste where we transpose. So I'm gonna take and, and copy all of these. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that whole section. And then I'm going to go right down here to Q11. And when you pull up the other paste things, there's a bunch of them in here. One of them, on the second row, third one over, says transpose. And you can kind of tell that's what it's doing. It's like flipping a row to a column. That's what's transposing is. Okay, so when I choose to transpose this, what you need to see is now what is in these cells. Well, the ones that were in a column are now just straight ones in a row. The two, which was a, you know, when they were in columns, which was the column, the previous column plus one, well now they're flipped to rows, so it's the previous row plus one. And you can see that here. Okay. And then you see the same thing for the threes. So that's how that works. Now what I wanted to point out is sometimes when you need to do more than one thing, well, let me just say, if I wanted to copy this, and then uh, transpose it, but not keep the formulas. Well, if I went over and looked at, let's just put it down here. If I went over here and looked at these choices, well, here's one for values. Here's the ones for transposing. I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I can. There's one on there. I'm looking at them. No, that's not the doing both of those things. So sometimes, if what you want to do with the special case requires 
more than just the shortcuts will give you, then just open up the case special dialog box and pick what you do want to do. You know, if you wanted values, but you also want to transpose them, then you have to open this, because that's the only way to do both of those things. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this one, if I transpose the values, what I would find down here is the ones, of course, were ones. But now the twos are just twos, and the threes are just threes. They're no longer formulas. Okay? But we know how that works. We know how, uh, we, we just last time learned how pasting just values work, and we learned how to transpose, and now we did it together. But a lot of times, like I said, you, you do have to pull up that, that dialog box because it gives you more options. Okay. Good. Everybody good with that and everything that we've covered up to this point? So what we're going to do next is work with logical functions. And I think logical functions are a lot of fun. I'm just like a really logical person, so obviously I, I think they're fun. But they really are. And it's not to say that even in this class that we're going to use a lot of logical functions in our modeling. Um, in fact, in some cases, we're going to steer away from it because it makes models nonlinear, and most of the time we spend our time in linear models. And so I just think that you can't really do an Excel for you without talking about this because they are, they are important tools in Excel to use logical functions. So let me show you something real quick first. I'm just going to move over to the side, find a little empty space here, and I'm going to type into this cell. I'll make this cell bigger. So I'm going to type into this cell equal three plus five equals eight. Okay. And you might be thinking, why on earth did you just do the math for Excel? Because I'm pretty sure Excel can do the math without you and you. I'm not doing the math for Excel when I do this, okay? I didn't, I, this, this isn't like, I'm gonna hit return and it's gonna say eight. I'm not asking, when I, when I do this, when past that first equal, which is an equal that's telling you that this is a formula or a function, right? Past that, if you ever see a logical operator of any sort, equal, less than, greater than, not equal to, which would be both of these, greater than, less, you know, whatever, any logical operation, you are not asking Excel to calculate this. You're asking Excel to evaluate this. Okay. So this is a question. This isn't a, a calculation. This is a question. Is 3 plus 5 equal to 8? Okay. And if it's a true statement, it's going to say true. If I had said, is 3 plus 5 equals to 9, then it would say false. Okay. So this wasn't a calculation. It was a question. And that's what we have to realize that we're going to be working with. Because we check conditions to see if they're true and to see if they're false, typically because we intend them to do something with that information. And that feeds right into us eventually getting to an if statement. Because in an if statement, the first part of it is a condition. It's something that is either true or false. Okay. And then, comma, something that you would do if it was true, comma, something that you would do if it's false. I'm going to hold off on the if statement for just a minute and focus just on the condition. So there's a condition. You're checking something. You're checking to see, like we're going to be checking over here, things like did they meet their sales quota? So is their sales greater than or equal to their quota? And you're going to be checking those sorts of things to then do something with that information. But there's another side of this. You might want to check more than one thing. Okay, you might want to check condition one and condition two, and on from there, okay? But if you do that, if you want to check more than one thing, one way to do that is to put it between either an and or to put it with an or. And this is going to throw you right back to your junior high Venn diagram days, the logic of ands and ors and how they work. But if, if I am testing multiple conditions and I want to know if this whole statement is true, <coughs> what would need to be true if I had used an and? All of them. Every single one of them has to be true. However, if I'm checking to see whether this whole thing is true, but I used an or to combine them, then what had to be true? 
At least one. That's all. Okay, at least one. So you know this concept. You know how this works. In Excel, we're going to work with that. We're going to work with ants and ors to put conditions together, which sometimes will be right in here, in order then to lead us to do other things with an if statement. Okay. So let's hold the if statement for just a second. Let's go back and look at the ors and the ants. is not really what I want you doing, but you need to see how it works if you choose to do it. So in other words, I'm gonna try to get us to steer away from ever hard coding values into formulas and functions. We want to get into the habit of not doing that. However, we still kind of need to know how it would look if we ever did, okay? I, I'm gonna say that. It really is important, I still think, for us to know how it would look if we did that. Okay, so the, so, oh, I just realized this. Do you have these location codes? No. 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 We don't have these location codes. Just don't, you don't even have to worry about putting <coughs> that in there. Just put MC, NB, SD, SF. Boom, 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 boom. I've been those eight letters. Here's why. Okay. Here's why. <coughs> because I want to show you what I do want you doing in formulas and functions. And that would be the condition that's checking to see what location they're at would be the condition that says, okay, this person, this salesperson's location is right there in D7. Is that equal to, and here's the best choice, if you have a place that has that text already in it, okay? And I do, right here. But in this, knowing that eventually I'm gonna be copying this down, which one of these needs to be absolute? The N10 is the one that needs to be absolute. Okay? Because I'm going to be comparing each person's location to whether or not it's SF. Yeah. Will you select SF or SD on your location codes? SF. Because oh, that comes from this. Okay. Yeah. I know it's not like a really long drawn out text, but I tried to just put a sentence in there to let everybody know what, what the logic was that was pushing this. Okay. okay, so there's one of my conditions. The other condition was if they're full time. Okay, so I'm going to check to see if C7, that's their full part time status. Okay. And here's the part where I said I'm going to go ahead and do this because I want you to know what it looks like. Okay, not because I think it's the best policy, but because I want you to know what it looks like. If you're comparing something to text and you are, if you decide to hard put something in, Text does have to be in quotation marks, okay? So that does have to be in quotation marks because it's text. This is preferable, but I am checking both things. Are they in the SF location? Are they full time? And the result of this is either a true or false for each individual person. They either are or aren't both of these things. Turns out there's only like three of them that are actually both actually eligible for both this one, but that's that's how that works. Okay, so far so good. Well, then my my explanation of how do we now determine if they're eligible for bonus two is in that second line. Bonus two is available for all MC location employees and all pay grade level two or higher employees. What is that implying? Is it 
Is it? Look at look at it. You know, look look at what it's saying. Are we saying they have to be both of those things? Did we use the word in English and? Yep. Okay. English doesn't always translate to lot. <coughs> okay. And so so you have to actually look at this statement and say, what is this implying? It's implying that anybody that's an MC location and anybody that has a pay grade level two or higher is saying both of these groups. When you're saying both of these groups, you're saying what? You're using, yeah, that's just what I said, you're using or. Now, I put this in here on purpose like this. Okay, I, I, I want you to think, not react to just word triggers, okay? I, I, I have a tendency on quizzes to not be trying to trick you at all. I like to put that stuff here. And if I was putting this on a quiz, I'd be more likely to say something like, in place of the word and, as well as. So that there was no trigger, so nothing triggered you to think and, and then you really would have to think which is it on your own. And on your own, you'd hopefully come up with the fact that this is an or, not, a, not an and. Okay, so what was the first one? MC location. So I checked to see if their location is equal to, and again, I have that code over here. So I'm gonna reference the code, which is the best way to do this, is to reference cells that have the values in that you're trying to match. And I will make that one an absolute reference because I know that when I copy it, it would move if I didn't. So check to see if that location, then I'm checking their pay grade in D7 to see if it's greater than or equal to and I, this is not the preferred way of doing it, but if you're comparing something to a numeric value, all you do is put the numeric value in. Okay, I want you to see it, that's why I'm putting it in here. Okay, so the numerics don't have quotation marks around them. So references, you obviously know this, also don't have quotation marks or anything around them. It doesn't matter what the contents of the cell are, you just say the cell reference. Okay, so, are they in the MC location? Is their pay grade greater than or equal to? Because if either one of those things are true, either one of those things are true, then they're going to be eligible for the bonus two, right? So quite a few more people are eligible for bonus two than were eligible for bonus one. So. So here's what we're going to do. 
for eligible employees, well, we're about to calculate bonus one, okay? So for eligible employees, bonus one is gonna be 5% of actual sales if the employee quota has been met. So what do we have to check for? If they're eligible, what else? And if they met their sales quota. Okay. So they have to be eligible and they had to meet their sales quota. Okay. So we want to put this together with what? With an and. And then we can begin to ask those questions. Now, are they eligible? We just figured that out, didn't we? We just figured that out, right? Here in G7. And no, you don't have to say is G7 true. You just have to say G7. Because G7 is a cell that contains the Boolean logical value of either a true or false, in this case true. Okay? So you don't have to say is it true. You just say G7, that's it. G G7 contains either a true or a false. Okay? Then you ask the question about did their actual sales, are they greater than or equal to, because we just said met, quota, quota. So again, don't have to ask if G7 is true, just G7, that is either true or false. And then is F7 greater than or equal to E7, did we meet our quota? Because if we did, so what we're gonna do if it's true is calculate their bonus for them right now. And their bonus, it tells us, is 5% of actual sales. So I'm going to do actual sales times 5%. And again, we are now going to start to steer away from hard coding things in. So I put a 5% on the sheet for you already. It's right there. Okay. So I'm going to take their actual sales that are in F7 and multiply them by I5, but I'm going to need to do what? Absolute. Absolute. Make absolute reference to that I5 because otherwise it would as I copied it. Okay, that's what I'm going to do if it's true, is calculate their bonus. If they're, if it's not true, in other words, they're either not eligible or they didn't meet their thing, then, then they don't get a bonus. Like, we're just going to put the bonus amount would be zero. Okay. So that's going to be the what I do if it's false, is just display that they they get zero bonus. I guess in some ways I'm calculating it, but it's zero. Does that make sense? This if statement makes sense. And I will copy that the rest of the way down. Only two of the three eligible, because there are only three anyway, and only two of those three eligible people actually met their quota. So they actually have a calculation of a, a, an amount for the bonus one. The others are zero. And I always get the question how they get that dash in there. That's just a format. I don't really know. It's in there somewhere, counting currency somewhere, but it's just a format. Yeah, yeah, I can try. <laughs> the problem is this doesn't zoom. And so what I have to do is click like this. There we go. Well, I can't, I guess I have to zoom first. Can you see it a little better than it was up there? Yeah. Can you see that? I kind of have to do that because I wish, I wish I could zoom the formula bar. And then there is a way that you have to open this whole new window and it just gets, it gets messy. Not as fast, but anyway. Okay, so that's the checking to see are they eligible, check to see if they met the quota, comma, calculating the bonus, or displaying zero, whichever is appropriate.
That's another reactive genetic. So I ask the question first, are they eligible? If they're eligible, I ask them, I ask, I ask the question, are their sales greater than or equal to their quota? Because if it is, I'm going to calculate their bonus. Otherwise, their bonus is zero. That's the end of that one. What if they've never been eligible in the first place? <laughs> then they would have had a bonus of zero. So what I just did was I took a nested an if statement inside of another if statement. Here's its condition. Here's what you do if it's true. Here's what you do if it's false. That's nested in this if statement, which is the condition here, what you do if it's true, what you do if it's false. This serves the purpose of asking two questions, just like the and did. And this, this, okay? Serves the purpose of asking two questions. Here's the difference in it. The difference is you can differentiate the reasons why someone isn't getting a bonus. Where up here, all you know is one of those conditions wasn't true, right? That, that's all you know. They didn't get a bonus it's because one of those conditions wasn't true. Here, you can say, how'd you get this zero right here? How'd you get to that zero right there? What was wrong? Why didn't the sales quota? They didn't meet their sales quota. But they were eligible, weren't they? Because if they weren't eligible, you'd have never gotten in here. So they were eligible, but they didn't meet their sales quota. How do you get to this zero? You're not eligible. You were never eligible to begin with. So if you needed to differentiate the reasoning behind it, like instead of putting zeros, we were putting text strings that said something like, I'm sorry, you didn't meet your quota for this one. Or this one, I'm sorry, you're not eligible for bonus two, bonus one, whatever this is. You're not eligible for the bonus. We don't need to. And so the and works perfectly fine for us. But if you did need to, this is the way to accomplish this, that and still have that ability to differentiate that you didn't have when you were just putting the two conditions together. So I'm going to type this next one like this. So it'll be there for you. Maybe you'll look at it. So I'm going to ask the question really just the way that I wrote it up there. You know, are you eligible? Remember, that's something we already figured out in age seven, right? So we already figured out, are you eligible at age seven? If they are, then I will ask the question, if they, oh, I, I, I didn't talk about this next one. I was about to repeat that one in this state. Okay, let's don't repeat that one in this one. Let's, let's look at what we're doing for this one, which also has two things. Okay, the bonus twos, okay. The bonus twos, for eligible employees, eligible employees, is 20% of actual sales that exceed the sales quota. So first they, they have to be eligible and they have to exceed their sales quota. So it has still two things, sorry about that. It still has two things, which is what I'm about to do is, if you're eligible for bonus two in H7, okay, are you eligible for bonus two? First question. Second question, did this, in this particular one, we have to know that it exceeded it, not just met it, but exceeded it, okay? So did your sales exceed your quota? particular one for bonus two is actually did you exceed quota? Okay. Did you exceed the quota? And if you did, I'm now going to calculate your bonus. The bonus is 20% of the sales that exceeded quota. Okay. So I, I've got to get that excess amount. Okay. So I need to in parentheses take actual sales and subtract out quota sales because I have to get that excess to be able to multiply it by the 20%, right? First question, are you eligible? Second question, did your sales exceed your quota? 
between now and calculating your bonus. The excess times 20% and I need to make the J5 an absolute reference, right? Yes. Why do we subtract in this uh, Because in this explanation up here, it's 20% of the actual that exceeds. In other words, it's on the previous one, it was 5% of the actual. On this one, it's 20% of the actual, the excess. The excess. Yeah. Good question. I, I know I didn't put like paragraphs of information, so you kind of have to sort of tie it up there. Um, if, of course, they had not had sales in excess of their quota, then their bonus would be zero. Close the parentheses for that if statement. You might notice they're color coded. I'm going to show you that in a second. But I never, and I've got to still get that. What if they have never been eligible in the first place? So I got to put another comma, zero. So exactly what I wrote up there is what's in here. And I am going to show you this because it does help you to figure out when you're matching your parentheses or if they're mismatched, if you don't have all of them that you need. They do color code them. So you see that these around the computation are, are uh, purple. Around the inner if statement, they're red, and around the outer if statement, they're black. So you can tell which ones match which other ones by looking at that. Yeah. How does the equation know that by saying true, they're eligible? Like, what if false made them eligible? Well, that's what we did here. That's what we did here. It was our logic that determined whether they were eligible or not, and we set it up so that the eligibility requirements, when they were met, would put a true into this cell. Yes. And the eligibility requirements when they weren't met would put a false into that cell. So then the computer already knows that if it says true, then the requirements are met? Like, what I don't understand is- It just knows it's true. All it knows is, that, you know, to, to the computer, me putting an H7 in there means nothing about this problem whatsoever. It just simply means there's a true in there, and so I'm gonna move here. And if there's a false in here, I'm going to move here. The logic comes from me. Okay, computer knows nothing except where am I directed when I see a true, and where am I directed when I see a false. If you were to put H7 equals um, true and <coughs> zero, would that how would that change? It? If you put right here, yeah. H7 equals zero. I mean, sorry, H7 equals true. Yeah. Okay, the overkill. Because you don't, I mean, you can, you actually can type that in, okay? But it's overkill because you don't need to because it's already a cell that has that in it. And then you put comma, whatever follows the comma is the thing it's going to do if that's true, if H7 is true. Okay. Yeah. Whatever follows the first comma. I want to make sure I understand both of the zeros. So the first zero means that they were eligible, but they don't get 